Richard also is a former deputy commissioner for counterterrorism at the New York City Police Department. And he's now principal of the Chertoff Group and a Bloomberg contributing editor. He joins us by phone from Aspen, Colorado this morning. Richard, we all get why, the Saudi, why Saudi Arabia and the UAE want to know what's in these BlackBerry messages. And you actually write that American intelligence officials are quote unquote envious. But what about privacy? Many of the people sending BlackBerry messages in the Middle East are Americans. Yes, that's right. And if they think the communications are private, they are mistaken. When you travel overseas, you're subject to the laws and rules of the other country that you're in. And just as you have to obey local law when you're in Saudi Arabia, your data is subject to Saudi law and control. And so it's in some ways an illusion to think that as you move around the world, you somehow are able to maintain the same privacy standards you have at home. Your data is going through a cell tower that is regulated by the Saudi government. And if that government wants to tap into it and listen to it, they are a sovereign country and they have that right. And that's true all over the world. Okay, they have that right. Is that to say that Research in Motion has given up its encryption codes to the U.S. government? Uh, because I had heard, and I have no idea whether it's accurate or not, you would know that, in fact, U.S. intelligence officials cracked those encryption codes, and perhaps so have the Israelis. Well, the encryption code relates mainly to the wireless transmission from the handheld device to the tower. Once it gets to the server of the telecommunications provider, RIM, or whoever else, it is decrypted so they can use it and route it. And that is the point at which electronic surveillance occurs. So in a way, the encryption debate is, is a little bit uh, misleading. This is really about getting direct access into the company's servers for the unencrypted communications that they require to move the data around in their system to deliver it wherever it's supposed to be going. Okay, so if the intelligence officials should have the right to demand this data, and if people should expect to give their privacy up when they're traveling in places like Saudi Arabia, why is it that Research in Motion is resisting the demands that the Saudis and uh, the, Emirate of, uh, the Emirate in the UAE are, are making? It's a good question. It's something I think they're going to need to explain to their shareholders, because in the end, telecommunications providers almost always buckle to state demands. They need to be in the UAE and Saudi Arabia more than those countries need room to be there. And we've seen this play out in many different places. We've seen in the in two, year 2000, Yahoo tried to provide a forum to sell Nazi memorabilia in France, and the French authorities said, no, you can't do that. They contested it in French court and lost. Google is trying to provide uncensored search results in China, and the, res, the results of that are well known. So the point is that governments have a big stake in the management of the Internet and the airwaves, and in the end, almost always win. And so I would expect to see, you know, gradual concessions behind the scenes uh, that will enable the uh, RIM to continue to provide BlackBerry services in these countries. Richard, very briefly, what about foreign policy concerns like human rights? Blackberries aren't just used by terrorists. They're used by honest Saudi citizens who are trying to shield things like dating plans from the prying eyes of the Saudi government. That's quite right. And as you know, the Internet is already strongly regulated in Saudi Arabia. And if, the, if someone wanted to use BlackBerry as a way to evade those other controls that the Saudi regime has imposed on its own people, that will become more difficult. But it's a, a difficult thing. You ask about foreign policy. It's a difficult thing for governments to say, from one government like the United States, to say to another, no, you do not have the authority to regulate your own information space the way you want to. Richard, I'm afraid we got to end it there.